Welcome back everyone. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my greenhouse full of weird and wonderful cactus and succulent plants. My name is Joe. I really cannot believe it's actually already early September. So here on the northern hemisphere where I live, strictly speaking, as per the calendar, autumn or the fall has actually officially started as of September 1st. In today's video, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about what I actually do in this important transition period and how I slowly start preparing my cactus and other succulents collection for the late autumn, early winter periods, when a lot of our plants, of course, go into their main winter dormancy period. Now, for all my viewers and friends on the Southern Hemisphere, of course, this time of the year would approximately equate to your early March. So just apply an approximate six month shift to what I'm actually describing here. And also, even if you are also living on the Northern Hemisphere, several of the items that I'm gonna be talking about may well be applicable, but also with a time shift applied, just depending on your location, local circumstances, and weather, of course. As I said, it is early September right now, and this is of course still a great time for our cacti and many other succulents to be going into a sort of a second growth phase following the heat of the summer and this period of the most intense heat and sunshine where a lot of our plants actually go into a sort of a mini dormancy period. So we've come out of that and a lot of our plants, as I say, have another burst of growth just ahead of the transition into the winter. We're still seeing a lot of flowers and we're still seeing some, uh, you know, autumn bloomers, if you like, among the cacti. Many of the Areocarpus will actually now slowly be, uh, you know, showing their first buds. So it's not like, um, you know, it's a switch where you go from growth to dormancy. It's a gradual process and uh, there are cacti, there are plants that will actually still continue to grow and flower well into the fall and autumn period. You know, that requires a little bit of TLC with the different elements of your collection. However, by the end of September and into early October, that main or the second growth period also comes to an end. But already now in early September, here in Germany and across Central Europe, the days are slowly and visibly getting shorter and shorter. And the temperatures have definitely peaked for this summer. So even if the sun is out, its intensity is slowly decreasing. The daytime high temperature clearly now is well below 30 degrees, more around 25 to 28 degrees centigrade. And also the nighttime temperatures are now in the teens. It was actually a chilly 10 degrees centigrade here in Bavaria last night. So clearly we're now entering a transition phase between the past main growth period and the upcoming main dormancy period. And let's remind ourselves, many of our plants are now going to have several months coming up again with a much reduced metabolism and a much reduced photosynthetic activity. So that period of dormancy. Basically, the stronger, healthier and fitter the plants enter this dormancy period, the better they will come out of it again in spring and the better they will then restart their growth and the higher the chances of them flowering in the upcoming next season, provided they're mature and old enough to do so in the first place, of course. And basically one can say plants that are already very stressed and struggling in the autumn will likely have a really hard time surviving the winter, unfortunately. So I thought I could actually just summarize a couple of points around my own preparations and activities in this transition period just to share with you and uh, hopefully there are some useful infos there that are relevant to yourself as well. In a nutshell, there are four key themes for me during the month of September and into early October. Number one is around watering and fertilizing. The second point is around the health and the pest control around our plants. 
So point three is around the overwintering and the dormancy location. And my fourth point is around weather and outside temperature. But as I said before, to each of these points, there's actually quite a bit more detail and specifics and perhaps practical points and tips that I would now like to share with you a little bit more. So for a change, let me start with the last point first. The weather and the outside temperature. As that actually drives a lot of the other points and activities, depending on how warm and or wet it happens to be in your location during the month of September and into October. Because that will actually then determine exactly when some of these activities become more relevant. Now, as you're probably well aware, most cacti and other succulents are actually quite sensitive to frost or freezing temperatures. So below zero degrees centigrade or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Once temperatures get to that freezing point, many of our plants can actually be seriously damaged, especially if they're exposed to frost for many hours. And furthermore, especially if they're actually standing in wet or damp soil. So for all of the plants that I've been growing outside during the summer, but equally also for my plants, of course, that I'm growing in the greenhouse, I will now again be following quite closely on TV or radio the shorter and longer term weather forecasts, watching out, of course, for the first night frost warnings. And it's really important that I bring all of my plants inside before that, if possible, well before that. So where I live, usually the first frost comes around early October, first or second week of October. Um, over the last few years with climate change, that has actually become less and less predictable. Sometimes it's been a bit earlier, sometimes quite a bit later. But in any case, it often comes at very short notice and with not much time to react. So gradually bringing them in well ahead of time avoids those very stressful and mad rush last minute moves. And because I've experienced a few of those over the years, I can tell you that's something to avoid if you can. So now is the time really to be preparing that space required for the dormancy period. Whether that's indoors in your house or apartment or in your greenhouse, perhaps on a rain protected balcony or terrace, to be able to move your plants quickly inside if needed. As I say, now is the perfect time to be preparing. And let's come back to that point around space in a moment again. So I don't know about yourself, but for me, a key question that seems to come up every year over and over again at the end of the summer is, where will all my plants actually go and will there be enough space for them during the winter dormancy period? There seems to be this law of physics that applies to cactus and succulent, maybe to all plant collections, which is they hardly ever get smaller. And because they grow over the summer, the location that we used for overwintering in the last season might not actually be as adequate or large enough even for the upcoming dormancy period. So not to worry, as I say, this is the time now to start looking at that, to start planning and to start preparing. Of course, what's important is that the overwintering location that we are looking for should actually be a relatively cool spot. Again, whether indoors or in a greenhouse, from my own experiences, I know that that point around finding a cool location for our cacti is not always a trivial and an easy one actually to realize. So perhaps we're lucky and we have a cool conservatory. Perhaps it's a cooler corridor or a hallway window or a mostly unheated spare room or even a cool basement can actually be an overwintering location. Now I know from some of you who have written to me that that's exactly what you're doing, which is overwintering your plant collections in a basement. Some of you with the help of extra plant and grow lights, 
and others actually without the benefit of that at all. And I must say, in the early years of my cactus and succulent plant collecting and growing, uh, the first probably 10 years or so, I overwintered my entire collection in a relatively dark but very cool basement location. And that worked very well. And as long as the plants remain entirely dry and are actually very dry already to start off with when they're put into this dark, cool location, they will largely be fine. One just has to take extra care when bringing them back into the brighter sunlight in the spring that that is actually something that happens very gradually because of the risk of sunburn. Now something else that I always do at this time of the year as well is I start thinking about the grouping, the grouping of my plants into mainly two groups. Those that actually require a slightly warmer versus those that are perfectly happy with a quite cool overwintering location. The majority of my plants actually overwinter at temperatures around 5 to 8 degrees centigrade often starting initially at the higher end of that range and then gradually in the winter moving to the lower end. And then there's that second group of plants with respect to overwintering temperatures, those that require a minimum of 12 or even 15 degrees centigrade. Quite a number of euphorbias from especially Madagascar or succulents from the Arabian Peninsula need these warmer winter temperatures. Equally cacti like the mellow cactus, Ubelmania, generally cacti that require higher temperatures are also those from the more sort of subtropical, maybe also coastal regions where temperatures tend to be slightly milder or warmer and even with a slightly higher humidity. Now is definitely also the time to be actually checking on our heating systems. So during September, I check whether my heating system is actually still working. I use an electrical heater as a main source, but I also have two backup systems in case that one fails. I have a portable gas heater and I have a portable petrol fueled generator, an electrical generator or inverter. Of course, now is also the time to check up on the thermostats whether the thermostat that uh, I'm using is actually properly working. That thermostat, of course, controls the temperature in the greenhouse and, of course, has to be set now during September to the temperatures I just mentioned, so 5 to 8 degrees centigrade in my case, definitely to ensure that there's no frost inside the greenhouse when the first cold spell hits. And of course, I have to make sure I don't forget to actually switch on the entire system, especially to make sure that I'm not caught out if that first frost does hit unexpectedly early. Now, unfortunately, with the costs of energy rising as fast as they currently are, depending on your own setup and where you live, it may also be quite a good idea to actually add some additional insulation to your greenhouse to save on energy and costs. Although my greenhouse normally already has a quite well insulating double glazing and also a quite thick and deep fully insulated concrete foundation, I really need that with the cold temperatures here in winter. I still nevertheless add an additional layer of insulating bubble wrap foil and I must say that has actually really reduced my energy costs and consumption by between 30 to even 50 percent in the past winters. With regard to the bubble wrap foil I actually attach that to the outside of my greenhouse along the four side walls and I attach it to the inside along the two roof glazings. But that's just my setup and there are of course several combinations possible here. That by the way also brings me to the point of lighting. Now as most of my plants go into full dormancy, so really a pretty much stopped metabolism and photosynthetic activity, 
Lighting is not really that crucial during the winter months for me. Of course, I could add grow lights, but I haven't done that for many years and I really haven't seen a significant downside to not applying extra lighting during the winter. The bubble wrap incidentally also really dims the light and a positive side effect is that on sunny winter days the bubble wrap actually helps diffuse the light and protects plants from sunburn for sure. Anyway, that's it for today again. I hope you found this video useful and I hope you actually transition your plants very successfully from the growth period towards the dormancy period. You know, you navigate through the fall and autumn months. Uh, it is still a very fun uh, time of the year. If you found this video useful, and I hope you did, then uh, as always, I'd really uh, be very happy if you gave me a like or you wrote a comment. And uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, obviously I'd be thrilled if you did. Now, hope to see you very soon again. Have a great day, take care and happy growing.